So it's been a while since I gave an update on my ground sound slayer and a lot has happened so I want to go over what changed. I switched out a lot of my gear so I can fit in echoes of creation. This helmet gives an insane amount of damage so I switched my gloves, belt and boots to have more resistance so I'm still capped. My boots now have a chance to avoid shock and together with another abyss jewel on the Stygian Vise belt, I now have a 100% chance to avoid shock which paired with the storm shroud jewel gives me immunity to all elemental ailments. Using echoes of creation feels good for the damage but the amount of damage you take when you use an ability uh, is too high for when you don't have an endurance charge and fortify up at the same time. So at the beginning of the map, it's sort of scary. So what I did was instead of using the fortify nodes, I picked up a forbidden flesh, forbidden flame setup where it gives me permanent fortify and the build still feels really tanky. You can see I'm running these pretty rippy maps and for the most part, I'm sort of tanking it. So yeah, the, the build feels pretty good. Uh, even though my HP is really low. Uh, I'm still working on getting better gear, but honestly, for, for what I have, it feels feels alright. The biggest change I've made is actually switching from a ground slam setup to earth shatter. Normally you would switch to earth shatter for single target damage, but with the helmet, I feel like you do enough damage already, so what I did was I dropped infernal cry, put in a general's cry linked with automation. General's cry doesn't really do anything, but what matters is that it's a short cooldown war cry that can shatter the shards from earth shatter. This way I don't have to manually cast war cries for consistent damage since it'll automatically cast like every 1.4 seconds or something, which makes this feel not like shit to play. Let's talk mapping strategies. Whenever I had to make currency, I've been running Harbingers and I think this build does it pretty well since it can sit near the Harbingers. Uh, so if you're playing Ground Slime or Earth Shatter, I'd recommend you at least give it a try. Uh, but the only caveat being uh, you'll make no currency unless you hit it big. Now I have a small sample size of loot since I didn't want to keep track of the loot for too many maps. So I only saved like 20 Harbinger maps worth of loot. I used three Harbinger Scarabs, a Regency, and a War Horde. I'll oversimplify the cost, but assuming Regency and War Horde Scarabs are 50C, and this will include the Chisel cost for, and the map, because I'm just running whatever drops. Uh, Harbinger Scarabs are 5C each, uh, Anarchy Craft is 4C, uh, then we're looking at about 69C a map. Now you'll probably spend less than that, but for 20 maps, it's like 8 Divines. And as you can see by this graph, minus all the lucky loot that I got that you probably won't see in 20 maps, it's pretty much go even or make a little bit of currency. I think of this strategy as you go even until you hit the fracturing shards. But it's fun seeing all the mobs, so I would say give it a go. Because I think for the most part, if you run 20 maps, you'll more often than not get a fracturing shard drop. And the drop rate of this, I would say is like probably like maybe like one in 10 maps. You'll, you'll, you'll get like fraction shards. So if you don't have enough currency to really like run enough maps, it's probably not worth doing. But if you do have enough, I'd say give it a go because it's actually really fun. 